Right, see you guys. See you later. I better grab the tiller, we're gonna crash. Yes. Yes, I'll look that way, thank you. See you guys. Bye. It is a lovely moor in here, and usually we'd stay, and especially to see Julian Martin. It's lovely, lovely guys, really are. Um, you make new friends every week, really, on the waterways, and friends for life, that's the beauty of it. Uh, nice to meet up with them. We are gonna see them again. They're heading the same way as us. Um, but I think their son and uh, his partner are coming tomorrow so they can spend the day with them um, and the weather isn't really looking too good so we thought well if we get a break in the weather we can have a walk over the Ponty or through the tunnels or go exploring anyway around Trevor so we thought we'd make headway but uh, yeah good to see him again Just as you go round the corner and come towards Bridge 19, there's the ever popular Poachers. Poachers pub there. They did do lovely food, but I've heard mixed reports about it. We'll see. Obviously, we haven't eaten there this time. I have had lovely fish and chips from there in the past, but I was speaking to someone this morning and apparently it's changed hands. And uh, it's very hit and miss, the food and they don't do food when they're supposed to. They seem to be closing. They must have some sort of staff problem or something. I don't know. Even in the short time that we've been on the Flangothan, we are noticing less and less leaves on the tree. Obviously they're falling every day. A lot of leaves in the canal, so we're finding we're having to put the boat into reverse a bit, just to declog the propeller a bit. Nothing major, no big deal. But it is nice, beautiful. Monk's Bridge. That looked lovely. So there's no rain forecast and guess what? It's persisting now. I don't know whether the camera's picking this rain up. It is throwing it down. So we've more chugs just on the centre line. I am not cruising in this. Uh, no fun. Gonna go in, have a coffee, let the rain go off and then we'll perhaps carry on. I'm going in. See you in a bit guys. <laughs> so we've just moored up for a brew and James and his mum Barbara and Dan have turned up. So I think they're coming for a cruise, aren't you guys? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, well, they're not pinching my sausage rolls. I mean, look at him, he, he, he is not pinching my sausage rolls. <laughs> yeah, we moored up and we heard off James. Uh, and he said that they're here, so uh, we just moored up, we've got the kettle on, and it's absolutely pouring down, and a couple of paddle boarders are just going past. Okay. <laughs> Well, as you can see, we're on our way again. The sun has started to pop up. Very nice. So I'm on the back, you can see, I've got James with me, Barbara's in the boat, and Dan, they're staying in the warm and in the relatively dry. We have got a little bit of water dripping off the trees, but it's nice, it's not raining, so let's get towards that aqueduct. Some lovely canal side properties along here, along Chirk Bank. It's a nice area. The only thing is, for a lot of it, you do have to moor on pins, which is a bit iffy, but 
just look at what you've got around you. Beautiful. And just in the distance when you come around the corner you can see the viaduct, choke viaduct to the left and obviously we're going over the aqueduct and the tunnel is immediately after. Three of us are here on the back, as you can see, there's James, there's Nikki, there we go. We were saying this aqueduct, if anything, I think is more spectacular than the Ponte. Uh, you've got the viaduct alongside us here. It truly is breathtaking. Um, we're waiting for a train though, there's no train. But it is good, you come immediately off this aqueduct and you are straight into Chirp Tunnel. So uh, we've got the lights ready as well, ready for a damp little passing through a black hole. The flow of the water here, obviously it's a narrow passage over the aqueduct, so the flow of the water from the Horseshoe Falls just up from Plangothlin is forcing the boat back. So you do need plenty of revs on to help you go over. You don't want to rush this though, it is special. So there's a, a winding hole, as I say, just at the end of uh, this aqueduct. So I'm going to use that winding hole to try and line up chugs for the tunnel. Um, yeah, just to make sure no one's coming the other way. You can see the other end. So Nikki's here with me. So we're going to have a look. Well, James is here as well. So we're all going to have a look, see if there's any boats coming and then uh, through the dark tunnel. Yeah, from this angle, it's a little bit tricky just to line up for the tunnel. So I'm going to go really, really slow, bring the back end of Chugs round, and then Nikki, who is here, can have a look if anything's coming. Now, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and we can't make out that we seem to think it's a bike coming through. Or it could be a head torch, we don't know. So I'm just backing it off and waiting for a bit. Well, we're all on the back of the boat. Every one of us seems to be on the back of the boat. And we're waiting for this, we're waiting for this boat to come. We're having a party. Um, yeah, the boat's coming through. There was a boat, uh, probably about three, 400 yards in front of us. So he's gone through the tunnel. Uh, we have established that that is a boat. So that boat's coming through and then we're going through. Shouldn't be too long. 
and it's the hippie boat coming out, the narrowboat traders. Oh, Nicky was looking forward to seeing them actually, but never mind. Take care, guys. And in we go. Whether you can see our faces, but you can certainly hear the revs of chugs. We're battling against the current through a very narrow tunnel. I know several narrow boats come through here and they've had to be towed. Um, yeah, you do need quite a bit of power to get through these tunnels. They do have a tow path uh, alongside through the tunnel. Obviously, back in the day with the old working boats, they didn't have engines as such, they had horsepower of the four-legged variety so the horses could pull the workboats through the tunnel. That's the tunnel done. Uh, I'll just go down now with a bit of rubbing compound, some paint, uh, a paintbrush and a spray gun. So we came out of the tunnel and uh, lots of trees over your head so it was quite cold there but sun's out and blue skies. James is on the tiller, you won't see him there, you might do, the sun is right between us. Um, yeah James has hired a boat a couple of times a year, he goes on holidays with his mum I think last year he was on the Leeds Liverpool, you were on the Fangothen a couple of weeks ago wasn't it? Three months ago. Three months ago they did the Fangothen in about two days I believe. Trevor Mason to Marbridge, two days. Not bad going, that's a bit quicker than us. Uh, so obviously it's nice for James to have a bit of a go on the tiller, it's nice for me to have a break as well which is, uh, it's lovely and the sun's out, what could be, what could be better? just in front and to the side of us. We're coming towards Chirk Marina and then after that we've got the White House Tunnel, the second and last one for the day. But uh, yeah, Chirk Marina just coming up. 